today we'll be talking about the energy veil and um, we all know that energy is the ability to do work so as living things we do require it to perform specific activities so yeah energy is very very important in us like as living things we do require any energy for growth also for production and reproduction and one example about production is that for a cow for a cow to produce milk it actually needs energy so without energy there, there cannot be any production of milk this is similar to the nutritive ratio the nutritive ratio there is a value that is needed in order for the animal to produce a certain product okay so now yeah let's move on and then down here i've got this schematic representation of energy in feet then here here we, we have the gross energy now gross energy is the energy that the animal intakes from the feet okay so let me just make it more simple by putting this uh this picture of hay here then i'm gonna put this one also here so that it can be simple so that we can visualize okay so now let's say that okay let me just use this pencil this white one okay so now let's just say that we, we're gonna feed our cow this hay okay so this hay contains gross energy in it okay then while the energy is taken in there's gonna be loss of energy through feces or manures like this, this manure here and uh, the reason why we start by uh subtracting the gross energy and the feces before okay let me just say this obviously to in order for us to to work with the digestibility also the metabolism we have to have the gross energy first okay so we subtract the loss of energy through feces because there are some contents that cannot be digested by the body um, an example is just crude fiber which contains uh cellulose hemicellulose and lignin then we subtract that before here so the purpose of this uh, schematic representation is to work with only energy not the feed remember that with uh with nutritive ratio we work we were working with the feed but today we're working with energy so we don't need manure to to work with energy but we just need to subtract it from our presentation and then gross we only need it because it's there is our start is our starting point of our energy then after we have subtracted the loss of energy through physics from the gross energy we are gonna have the energy is gonna be a digestible energy then here is where we have that process called digestibility remember we talked about it in that last video about our nutritive ratios so if you didn't see that video be sure to subscribe to see that okay then now digestibility is the amount of nutrients absorbed by the body but since today we are talking about energy it will be the amount of energy absorbed by the body because today we are talking about energy right then now from the digestive from the digestible energy there's gonna be loss of energy through urine and fermentation for urine to be produced there's gonna be energy needed to to perform that and then here fermentation fermentation occurs in the large intestine whereby microbes releases fermentation gases to fermentate some some food particles that were not digestible in the stomach and then after this process our energy now is going to be metabolic energy then in at metabolic energy there is going to there, there is going to be loss of energy through heat I'm sure you know that our bodies are always warm at, at all times so for our bodies to always be warm there, there is a production of heat from the metabolic energy so the energy is lost from the production of heat to make our bodies warm and our, our bodies are always warm then after the loss of energy through heat then we are gonna be left with the the net energy the, the net energy is the is the energy after deductions of all the 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 energies that are absorbed through the the animal's body because i'm sure you know that if a person has a job they have a they have a gross salary 
which is the, the salary before any deductions from their money then there is the net salary which is the salary after deductions and deductions might be pension funds uifs medical aids and so on but in in energy the deductions are a lo loss of energy through feces and then also loss of energy through urine and fermentation also through heat so here this let me show you this so now in your exam they might give you this presentation and then they, there's gonna be missing parts here and then they they're gonna need you to fill to fill it up okay like they might they might remove this metabolic energy here and then just put a wanting you to to identify it okay so you you have to know that we start by the cross i'm sure you already know that cross comes first and then net at the end and then metabolic is in the large intestine digestibility is in is in the stomach so that this is just how the digestive system works okay and then this side you're gonna start with uh the food contents because we are not gonna be talking about them here when we only need to talk about the energy okay and also energy is measured in joules so that is why i put j's that is why i put j's here then for example let's just say that in your exam they give you uh seven joules here in the cross energy then with your seven joules of cross energy you're gonna have to subtract the loss of energy through feces here then for example here let's just say the amount of energy through the feces is only one joule okay then you're gonna say seven joules minus one joule then that, that is gonna give us uh six joules it means that our digestible energy contains now contains six joules okay then after that you're gonna have to also subtract the energy that is lost through urine and fermentation gases then here let's just say is only two joules let's just say that we lost uh two joules of of energy here then then you're gonna say six joules subtracting two joules then your metabolic energy is gonna be four joules then after that the metabolic the metabolic energy also is gonna subtract the the energy lost through heat then let's just say our energy lost through heat is only one joule okay then then it means that uh the metabol the metabolic energy which which is four is gonna subtract the one joule then our net energy is gonna be three joules then that is just how it, it, it calculates itself then let's say they give you these other numbers and then they remove this four here and then they tell you to identify it then here you're gonna have to calculate it yourself okay so it, it is it is very very simple if you're studying from the from the net energy you're gonna say three plus one then that is gonna give you four then if you're studying from this side you can say six subtracting two and then it's gonna give you the four and then in your exam sometimes they can be tricky they they can just uh they can remove this four right here and also these two and then they tell you to find the value of this uh the the value of metabolic energy and also uh, the value of energy loss through urine and fermentation gases so how do you calculate this this is very very simple you're gonna start from the back and then remember that go going forward you were subtracting okay so it means that going backwards going backwards you you gonna you're gonna add so here you're gonna you're gonna start with your net energy so it's gonna be three joules plus one joule then it's it is gonna give you four joules for the metabolic energy then from here you you, you will have uh the digestible energy value also the metabolic energy value then you just need the energy lost through energy lost through urine and fermentation then you from here because you're moving from this side to this side that means that you're gonna subtract so it's gonna be uh six joules uh, subtracting four joules then you're gonna be left with two joules so then that is just how you find the values that that are gonna be needed here then another thing to just keep in mind is just to memorize all this through your exam and i'm telling you you're gonna excel that way 
So now we are done with uh, the schematic representation of energy in feet. So now let me just give you the importance of calculating this energy value. The importance of calculating the energy value is to determine the, en the animal's diet, okay? Also to determine the feeding standard and to determine ration formulations as well. Okay, so that is just how energy value works but then going forward going forward we can use this this method called the Pearson square method to calculate our feed for our animals okay so the Pearson square method is 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 a method that we use to calculate uh, the desired value for example here the desired value of digestible proteins that we want in the animals feed Okay, now let me just give you a practical example of how you can use the Pearson, the Pearson square method. So let's say let's say you want to make a bunny chow, okay? Then you don't want to put a lot of fries in it. Also, you don't want to put a lot of sausages. The point here is that you don't want a lot of fats in in your in your food, okay? So you want you want to make a balanced diet. Then let's say that your doctor tells you that. Uh, in order to make your bunny chow a balanced diet, you're going to need to only have 25% of fat in it. Okay, so let's just, here, I know that here we said uh, digestible proteins value, but here today we're talking about, today we're talking about digestible fat. So we're going to write our digestible fat value here. So the doctor told, told us to put 25% percent of our digestible fat so th this is this is the fat that we, we need in in our in our feed okay so then we go back so let's just say our sausages here they contain uh uh let me just say they contain 43 43 percent 43 percent of of fat in them and then our fries here let me just say they could they contain 36 let me just say they con they contain 36 percent of fat in them okay so now so now what 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 you're gonna do is that you're gonna come back to your to your to your to your pearson square then i want one thing you have to note is that in your exam when, when they give you the the pearson square method they're gonna give you information up here and then the information is gonna have uh, feed A in here and, and then feed B in here. Okay, so however the, the information explains Whatever feed that you see first is the feed that you're gonna put on feed A Just put them respectively as they are. Okay, but in my case here We have the sausages first before the before the before the fries So I'm gonna put the, the sausage first here So I'm gonna so I'm gonna put the sausage on feed a okay so our our sausages contains 43 percent of fat so we're gonna put that 43 percent here okay let, let's let's put uh the 43 wait what's going on here so we're gonna write uh 43 percent of fat then our fries our fried which is feed b our fries contains 36 percent of fat uh, I'm gonna write 36 percent of fats right here. Then now here, the the end result that we're gonna get here is is how we, we must measure is how we must measure these feeds in order to make a balanced diet. Okay. So now how do we calculate this? So here we calculate the difference, and then always when you calculate the difference, you must start with the the bigger the bigger number subtracting the smaller number. And then your answer for feed A is going to be at the bottom corner of the right hand side. Okay. And then for feed B is going to be at the, at the upper corner of the right hand side. Yeah, that is just how it, it works. So now we're going to say feed A subtract the, the desired uh, value of fat. So it's going to be 43% subtracting 25%. And that's gonna be uh 18 yeah then we're gonna write our 18 here so our answer is gonna be in 
parts. Our answers are represented in parts, not percentages. Don't, don't continue to write percentages in your answers, okay? Then we, we, we move on to fit B. Fit B is going to be 36% subtract 25%. And then our answer is going to be 11. Yes, yes, 11 parts. Then now here we have the measurement that we must use in order to get a balanced diet for our bunny child then it is in parts okay but then you're gonna have to continue to calculate it to 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 put your answer in percentages to know because percentages are simpler to know how many percentages you must use from your fries in order to make our bunny chow a balanced diet okay so now how are you gonna do it you're gonna take this 18 percent and then add it to the 11 percent that way it's going to give you the overall feed with fat that you're going to use for your bunny child. So you're going to say 18% uh, plus the 11% and that is going to give you 29. Okay, so this is 29. So this 29 represent 100% of feed with fat in your, in your bunny child. Okay, so, so now... Uh, in order for us to find uh, the value of feed A that we're going to put in our feed, we're going to say 18% uh, divided by 29. Okay, 18% divided by 29. Now, because we want our answer in, in percentages, then we're going to multiply it by 100%. Okay, then our answer is going to be 62% percent okay so this is the amount of fries that you can you have to put in in your bunny child from from this bowl you you only have to 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 take 62 percent of fries to make this bunny child a, a balanced diet and also remember that Remember that, guys, this is just an example. So don't come for me saying, hey, you said uh, eating a lot of fries is healthy. No, I'm not saying it's uh, I'm not. I'm not saying eating 60, 62% of, of fries in reality is healthy. But here is just an example, okay? So you're going to do the same about the, the, the sausages. So you're just going to say 11, 11 divided by 29 multiplying by 100. And that's going to give you 38 percent and that is going to give you 38 38 percent as a whole number okay yeah so from this from these sausages you only have to to use 38 percent of them and then your fries you only have to use 62 percent and that is just how it works guys you see oh ah, i almost so you showed you this oh guys here this this tool here this is called the calorimeter so a calorimeter is used to determine the gross energy so here scientists use this thing to determine the amount of energy that is contained in for for example the the amount of energy that that is in the hay they're going to use that calorimeter to measure the amount of energy in it yeah so that is just how it goes okay yeah and so this brings us to to the end of our lesson for today so kindly subscribe who knows god might reward you with a wisdom for a distinction so i wish you all the best in your exam and i'll see you in our next video